Chapter 5 Chester Goes Into His Act The next morning, I was awakened by a scream. Robert, Robert, come down here right away. There's something wrong in the kitchen. For a moment, panic seized me. I thought I should run out of dog food. But then I remembered the events of the previous evening. Mr. Morneau came bounding down the stairs. Chester, Chester, I cried. Did you see Mr. Morneau? His face had turned white. It's Bonicula, isn't it? No, he said calmly. It's a shaving cream, you idiot. By now, the excitement in the kitchen was at full throttle. The table was covered with Bonicula's handiwork. There were white beans and white peas and white squash and white tomatoes and white lettuce and white zucchini. What can it mean, Robert? Mrs. Murnau was saying, I'm getting worried. One tomato is a curiosity, but this is unheard of. There must be something wrong with our refrigerator. That's it. It's turning all the vegetables white. But look, she said, I left these tomatoes on the windowsill and they are white too. And this squash. I left the bowl on the, on the table. At that moment, Pete and Toby came into the kitchen. Holy cow, what's going on? Hey, maybe it's a vegetable blight, Mom. Could that be, Robert? Did you ever heard it here? Did you ever hear of anything like that? Well, uh, no, actually. That is, I've heard of a blight, but nothing like this. Just a lean my way. This will take forever if we leave it up, leave it up to them. Sometimes human beings can be so slow. I started to answer him, but he was heading for the table. What about the friends of yours in the agriculture department? Oh, Tom Cragen? Could we call him and ask him if we're doing something wrong? It's daily tea, Mom. Peter interjected. I know about this stuff. It's because you buy vegetables that aren't organic. All vegetables are organic, Peter. Mrs. Morneau replied, That's not what my teacher says. See, Toby, I told you this would happen. They are using chemicals on our food, and if you are not careful, you will turn white, too. Like that? Robert, couldn't you take that shaving cream off your face? Oh, yes, of course. Where's my towel? I know I brought it down with me. For that matter, where was Chester? I'd have seen him going toward the table. But I'd lost the track of him, listening to all the talk about daily tea. I just hoped that they didn't use any of that stuff where they grew chocolate cupcakes. Pete, did you take my towel? Why would I take your towel, Dad? I don't shave. Just then, the door swung open. I could not believe my eyes. There was Chester with a Mr. Morning's towel draped, draped across his bag and tied under his neck like a cape. That was, that was strange enough, but on his face was an expression that sent chills down my spine. His eyes were wide and staring. The corners of his mouth were pulled back in an evil grimace. His teeth were bared and gleaming in the morning light. He cackled menacingly and threw back his head as if he were laughing at all of us. I thought he had completely lost his mind. There was my towel. What's the matter, Chester? Were you cold? Mr. Werner bent down to take the towel from Chester. Before you could lay his hands on it, Chester flipped over onto his back, closed his eyes, and folded his paws over his chest. It was a hideous sight. He opened his eyes wide. With the paws outstretched, he slowly lifted his head. His eyes glazed and vacant. Soon the upper half of his body followed, all in one smooth flow, until he was in a sitting position. Hey, Dad, did you leave your brandy glass out last night? Chetel is acting a little weird. Well, son, cats are funny creatures. I glanced at Chester. He wasn't laughing. Psst, Chester, what are you up to? I'm a vampire, you dolt. Can't you tell? I'm trying to warn them. Well, it's not working. You'd better think of something else. Chester frowned, apparently deep in thought. So you see, Toby, Mr. Morning was explaining. 
all cats are as an individual, as all people. Maybe he just wants to get our attention. Isn't that right, kitty cat? Ordinarily, ordinarily, Chester would have left the room upon being called the kitty cat, but he was lost in thought. Come on, Chester, give me back my towel. Mr. Murnau moved toward Chester. Chester's eyes lit up. He looked at me and smiled. I sensed I was not going to like what he had in mind. I was toying with the notion of sinking under the table when Chester fixed me with his eyes. How deep they were, like black pools. I felt myself applauding. Lost in them, my will no longer my own. I felt an inexplicable urge to murmur. Yes, master. When he walked slowly, sadly toward me, as he drew nearer, I found myself unable to move. He stopped before me, never taking his gaze from me, and lunged. You! Mom, Chatter bit Harold on the neck. Oh, that wasn't a real bite, was it, Chatter? There was a love bite. Isn't that cute? Love bite, my foot, that hurt. Chester, what's the matter with you? I sputtered. Do I look like a tomato? Oh, it doesn't matter anyway, Harold. They don't understand. How can human beings read the same books I do and still be so thick? Our conversation was interrupted. Mrs. Murnau picked the chatter up and cuddled him. I was praying he would, she would not add insult to injury by kissing his nose, which he hates more than anything. Poor Chatter, do you need a little love? Do you know what I'm gonna do? Are you big ball of fuzz, you? Uh-oh, I could tell what was coming. I'm gonna kiss you on your little nose. Yep, I could tell that was coming all right. Chatter knew better than to resist. He went limp in Mrs. Murnau's arms. Mr. Murnau took his towel off Chatter. I still don't know why he is wearing my towel. He said, I think he must be cold, dear. Here's your towel. Why don't you get his kitty sweater? Chester looked ill. And he can wear that all day. As Chester was being buttoned into his bright yellow sweater, with a little purple mask in cowboy hats all over it, Mr. Murnau said, What about those vegetables? Shall I speak to Tom Cregan? Yes, dear. Mrs. Murnau said, why don't you, I'm sure there's something, uh, I'm sure there's some explanation. In the meantime, I'll change markets. To tell you the truth, I'm really much more worried about Chester. We'd better keep our eye on him. Chester and I did not speak until late afternoon. I was busy nursing my neck, and Chester was busy hiding under the sofa. Too embarrassed to be seen. When we did speak at last, it was a brief exchange. Hey, Chester, I called when he finally crawled out from under. We don't have to worry about any vampire bunnies anymore. All you have to do is stand outside his cage in that sweater, and he will laugh himself to death. Chester was not amused. That's right, make a fun. All of you, no one understands. I tried to warn them, and they wouldn't heed. Now, I'm going to take matters into my own hands. Whereupon, Chatter and his 16 purple mice went into the kitchen for dinner.